continue to worship God. I appreciate Him. I appreciate His presence in this place.
of ages. As we gather here this morning, we pray that the Lord will speak to our heart. In the mighty name of Jesus, grant us understanding and insight. Empower house through enlightenment by the word. We give you all glory, honor, and praises for this. Blessed be your holy name forever. Let your word have a free course in this place this morning. And let the name of Jesus be glorified. Blessed be your holy name forever. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's have our seat. Good morning, everybody. You're welcome. Well, last week we faced that side. This week we are facing this side. Next week we will face the normal side. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, sorry for the inconvenience. We are through with the, you know, the flooring. And by the grace of God, also we do the tiling. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Now, this morning, we just continue from where we stopped last week. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, we are looking at, you know, the, the, the process of envisioning. Hallelujah. And I believe God has blessed someone through this teaching. And uh, we are looking at, you know, the things you need to do. needs to do or must do is to write the vision make it plain your vision must be written properly captured that is you must have an idea of where you are heading to or what the vision is all about I've seen to do this you ask them one or two questions they are unable to answer you uh, it's as a result of you know not you know inability to actually you know have a solid idea of the vision that they have. A vision must, you know, be well captured in your mind. You must know what you want to set out to do. Then after you translate or you look at that vision and come up with appropriate action steps or initiatives that will facilitate its realization. That is the area where a lot of people have problems. It's so easy to have vision. But translating that vision into something that is concrete is another thing entirely. Hallelujah. Every student, for instance, that enters the university has a vision to come out with flying colors. I've never seen anyone coming to school and say, well, my vision is to fail. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. They will tell you have a dream to leave this place with impressive grades or impressive performance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But at the end of the day, many do leave the school or the university with performances that are not quite impressive. What is responsible for this, more often than not, inability to be able to translate that vision into practical steps that will facilitate its actualization. Hallelujah. So, and one thing that will help is your ability to write down the vision look at it very well, have a clear picture of what it's all about, then come up with appropriate initiative. These are action steps that, you know, uh, will drive the vision. Now, this morning we'll take a step further by looking at a key ingredient of actualizing vision. Hallelujah. And that key ingredient is what is called work or labor. Work or labor. Hallelujah. When I'm talking of work, don't mind my pronunciation. W-O-R-K. You know, the way I pronounce it, you might think I'm referring to walking around. Hallelujah. W-A-L-K. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is W-O-R-K. Walk. No vision will ever become a reality without work or labor. 
is by far the most active ingredient of translating a vision into reality. Whoever has a vision and is not ready to put down labor, that vision will remain in the realm of vision. At the end of the day, it will never turn out into anything. And in all honesty, many people have vision to do one thing or the other, to become one thing or the other, but they are not ready to put down the necessary labor. They are not ready to work. And uh, the outcome of such, you know, uh, attitude or of such posture is that any ref <coughs> labor defines greatness. And people who just want things to come down cheaply, they will never become anything in life. Go and look at the nations of the world that are progressive, the so-called developed countries. One key thing you will realize about their way of life over there is the value they place on labor. They are developed, right? Because they work. They are developed because they labor. The strength of the economy of any nation in reality is defined by their productivity. And productivity is a function of labor. Why are we having problems? Yeah, you know, one of the things I, when you look around this, in Nigeria, it's like we have this idea that you don't have to work before you become anything. And it's because many people who have money that you see around, they never labor to get the money. Are we together? They never labor to get the money. I have contact in government. They bring out contract overvalued. They share the money. Do you understand? Right? So you see wealth around us without productivity. And anywhere you see wealth without productivity, that nation can never make progress. Because it is true productivity engineered by labor. Do you understand that wealth is created? Wealth does not fall down from heaven. In our country today, you see so much people with so much money, but the money is not as a result of the act of productivity. And any nation that exists like that does not have a future. Why is our economy so poor? Our economy is so poor because the work we do, do you understand, does not amount or does not translate into much productivity compared with what happened in some other nation. I'm sure you've heard the word GDP before. What is GDP? It's an economic term which means gross domestic product. That is the aggregate of what is produced by a nation collectively. And when you look at our gross domestic product, you will realize we do not produce anything. And one key problem we have is our work ethics. And now that Nigeria does not want to work, if you could just be sleepy and money would be dropping. Eh? And coming to church to share testimony. He doesn't mind that. Hallelujah. 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 And as long as we continue like that, this country can never make progress. Wealth is created through productivity. Productivity is a function of labor. In other words, anyone that wants to drive away poverty from his life, are you laboring? Are you working? If you are not working, if you are not laboring, 
If you are not productive, wealth cannot. Genuine wealth. I'm not talking of voodoo wealth. Genuine wealth, authentic wealth, cannot come into your life. Hallelujah. 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 So in the book of Genesis Exodus that we have read, God, it was more or less like a commandment. Six days thou shalt walk. God expects each one of us to do what? To walk. And he expects our sustenance on earth to be driven by what we are producing. So whoever is not productive does not deserve to exist. Mm, that's too hard. First Thessalonians. Hallelujah. 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 First Thessalonians. Chapter 4, verse 11. And that ye study to be quiet and do your own business and to work with your own hands, not with the hands of another person. Work with your own hands as we commanded you. Are we together? That's Paul writing to the Thessalonians Christians. Study to be quiet, mind your own business, that is, give attention to your own business, work with your hands, your own hands, as we commanded you, that you may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing. In other words, your needs are supposed to be taken care of through what? Through your work. That's Christianity. Hallelujah. 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 Second Thessalonians. Now Paul preached a very powerful message to these guys in chapter 5 of First Thessalonians. He talked about rapture. And when the people embrace the message, they stop going to work. Hallelujah. Because they believe that Jesus will soon come. Why should you go to work? Praise the Lord. Amen. So when he heard about that, he wrote another epistle to them. And that is Second Thessalonians. Hallelujah. Let me fish out the scripture for us. There he said, whoever, that is Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Let's start reading from verse 7. Sorry, let's start reading from verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. The word disorderly there means I do. You see a brother that is always I do not bring anything. Run away from me. Hallelujah. Verse 7. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us. For we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught. But wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Say, we work night and day to take care of ourselves. So if you are working during the day and what you are making is not sufficient to take care of you, spend the night hours to work as well. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's in the Bible, that's what he has said. Maybe we should read a better translation. Or maybe NIV. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 9. 
not because we have no power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. For even when we were with you, this we command you that if any will not walk, neither should he eat. Give us a more modern translation of this verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to walk shall not eat. And the implication, if you don't eat, what will happen? Huh? The person will die eventually. So the implication, whoever is not ready to walk on planet Earth does not deserve to exist on the planet. Are we together? Are we together? Are we together? Genesis chapter 1. God had a vision of creating the heavens and the earth. He started with the heavens. Everything was okay. Then he switched over to the earth. What he saw did not correlate with the vision he had. Are we together? What did he do? He started walking. He started doing what? Walking. And by the end of that chapter, Genesis chapter chapter 1, let's take a look at it. Look at, you know, what God observed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, jump to verse 2. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. Hallelujah. God did what? He ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he has made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified because that in it he had rested from all his works which God created and made. Now, from this I always tell people, no human being deserves to rest until you have completed your work. Many want to rest before they walk. No. Walk. And that is why the Bible says, the sleep of a man that has labored is always sweet. Hallelujah. Why? Number one, when you have worked and you are exhausted, every fiber of your being will sleep. Even when demons show up, your body will respond. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's number one. Your, your sleep will be sweet because of the expectation you have with regard to your labor. If you are a farmer and you have gone to the farm, and you've planted 200 heaps of yam, and you, when you got home and you sleep, right, your sleep will be so sweet because of the expectation of the harvest of 200 tubers of yam. Are we together? Hallelujah. The expectation of the positive result of your labor is what makes your sleep to be sweet. So when people do not do anything, they cannot sleep, and the sleep will be sweet. I expectation, particularly when you have done what you need to do to make it to become a reality, does not, it drives anxiety out of your life or worry. But when people have not done anything, what would they be expecting? Nothing. And that's what creates anxiety and fear. How will I be able to take care of this need? How will I be able to do this? How will I be able to do this? Now, when you live like that, there is no way you can sleep and your sleep will be sweet. Hallelujah. So, God walked. Six days. It was when he completed his work that he decided to rest. And that's why he sanctified the seventh day as a day of rest. And because God placed high value on work, that is why he made it a commandment to the nation of Israel 
Six days thou shalt walk, and the seventh you rest. Are we together? Are we together? You know, a creator does in his own image and in his likeness. If God believes in work, right, he expects those of us who are in his image and likeness to believe in work and labor. I think that is where we get that common saying that there is dignity in labor. Labor dignifies you because it does not make your existence to depend on the mercy of another person. Are we together? My own existence does not depend on the mercy of anybody. Right? I have my income because I work. And because I earn income and I work, uh, nobody can say that when he comes uh, tomorrow, I will not give him what he's looking for. No. Are we together? When I exchange my labor for money, money is currency, and the implication is I can convert it to anything that I want, provided I have it in sufficient amount to take care of that thing that I desire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So vision or dreaming without work or labor will not amount to anything. Are we together? Are we together? Are we together? I always tell people, is this nation will change. Our work ethics must change. Where was I going on? Okay, I was going to Lagery on, was it on Monday or so? It was almost to 10. Then I realized the heavy traffic on this our road one. People are just coming to work. 10 o'clock. They are all expected to be at their table. Of course, if you are an academic staff, you know, you are not under that rule. Do you understand? You can engage your student anytime, you know, it's fixed, you know, it's scheduled for the lecture. About those who are administrative staff, you see some of them just entry, nine o'clock, ten. And before four, people will pick their bags, they are going home. That's not productivity. Are we together? And when they get to work, there was there I wanted to go and pay for electricity. I go to that unit where you pay. What do they call it? You know, in the registry, right? People waited, 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 waited. I got there to nine. But some people have been there since eight. The lady that will attend to us did not show up. So we all waited. After she came, minutes after nine, she first greeted everybody. That one took almost 15 minutes. Huh? Then after that, she now decided to pray for the day. Where I was, I was angry. But among those of us waiting, someone was saying, Amen. I did not join them to say, Amen. As far as I'm concerned, God can't answer the prayer of such a person. She's a robber. She has already stolen one working hour from OEU. If God should operate by justice, equivalent of that one hour ought to be deducted from her salary. You know, one big problem we have in this country is, you know, salaries are paid monthly. In the United States, it is hours. Uh, when, 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 I think it was, uh, you know, at Lade, you know, when he went back and, uh, you know, he was talking, uh, when you report at the lab, Right, there is a computer that monitors the time when you show up. There is a computer that watches you while you are working. Anytime you get out of that place, it records the number of minutes or seconds you are you step out. And he said, Well, the head of that unit will calculate everything. It's on the basis of that that determine what they pay you. I, I say I wish we had that in Nigeria. Our productivity will increase. Without productivity, wealth can't come. And once there is no wealth, it's poverty. I say, oh, we wish we have that. But some people, you see fires on their table, something they could finish in a day, sometimes a whole month, they 
will not even touch half of it. When I went on sabbatical in Abuja, the first day I reported at work, I got to the federal secretariat 7.30 in the morning. The place was as empty as the grave of Jesus Christ. Empty. Then I stood in front of the office. It was 9.30 that the cleaner came. Our messenger showed up cut after 10. The other officers, 11. Then the directors, 12. And this, the, that is the engine room of Nigerian bureaucracy. If, we don't, if you don't get it right in that secretariat, this country can never be okay. Because it's the civil servant, right, that we implement policy. Politicians who are political office holders, we just say, we want to make 1,000 kilometers of roads. It's the civil servant that will sit down, right? How will this idea turn into reality? They are the one at the end of this, okay, let's do it on geopolitical zone basis, right? Is it Trump Is it Expressway? Right? When do we do the engineering design? What kind of quality that do we want? Then after that, what is the cost? They are the one that will work everything out. And these are people coming to work very late. Right? When, when I join them, I, I will be the first. Anytime we have work to do like this, when it is quarter to three, some of my colleagues will say, let hey, we continue tomorrow. Say, oh, we can finish this thing today. Ah. Say, if we finish it today, which one are we going to do tomorrow? One day, one of them look at me and say, you spent too, so much time in classroom, you don't know how this country works. Because my home is, let's work. Hallelujah. A little work that someone can finish in one hour, sometimes for a whole month, you are pursuing it. And the same person, interestingly, we go to church. God bless me, bless me. You are stealing the hours of your employer and you still expect God to reward you. The late founder of Redeemed Christian Church of God, Reverend Akida Yomi, will say, well, if your employer employs you to work for eight hours and at the end of the day you only work for two hours and you collect the salary, God will ensure devourer remove what you have stolen. Because you are being unfair to him. Hallelujah. So no nation can become great when we have that kind of attitude. No nation can succeed. No nation can become great when people are not ready to work. Because it's through the process of work that wealth is created. Where there is no work, ideally there should be no wealth. Are we together? Rich nations of the world, they work. You look at the Japanese, the way they work. The Koreans emerge as a force to reckon with globally as a result of their work ethics. After the end of the Second World War, it was the Japanese, everybody were praising the way they work in Japan. Right? Then the Koreans came. Nobody gave them any chance to become anything. But thank God for that, their great leader, General Park, eventually was assassinated. Right? When he introduced their own form of national youth service call we are doing. You will serve the nation for one year. And it was full military service. Not our own. We are, they just train you how to do parade. The real military discipline is not there. Are we together? It's, you are going into the military. <clears throat> and they post you to the most horrible part of that country. And your report will define what will happen to you. Hallelujah. Right? And by the time there are companies, construction companies, LG, I mean, Lucky Gold Star, which eventually became LG, they were all of them like that. Right? They suddenly realize that graduates from universities that have participated in the so-called one-year mandatory, they 
they work so hard because of the military discipline they have instilled in them. When you're on that one year service, you work for 18 hours a day, not 8. 18 hours. So they started recruiting them and anytime Korean companies got contract, particularly in the Arabian Peninsula then, what will take Western companies six years to produce, the Koreans will deliver in 18 months. Because they recruit their young ones who are in the military, they post them overseas. And you work 18 hours. So their companies just give them the contract. They won't come back two years and say, well, there is variation. Prices of this has jumped up. And they will do excellent work. So before you know what's going on, they became global players. Today, Hyundai is the la has the largest shipbuilding yard in the world. And we were ahead of them in the 60s. In fact, nobody gave Korea the ghost of a chance of survival. They too had their civil war. Uh, but we emerge far, far better out of our civil war than their own civil war. But today, are we on the same level? There is nothing those people cannot produce. Rather, here in Nigeria, there is nothing we cannot consume. We are good consumers. But when it comes to productivity, you won't find us there. And yet, we want the nation to move forward. No. Work ethics nationally must change if this country will be transformed. Now, on a personal level, your own work ethics too must change. If you really want to experience the full weight of God's blessing. God will bless you, but it's by work. Are we together? Genesis. The book of Genesis, chapter 2. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 to 8. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the feet before it was in the earth, and every herb of the feet before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. Tilling is work. Are we together? But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. The first task or assignment God gave man after blessing him was to walk. Are we together? Huh? Not a wife. Walk. Hallelujah. Put him in the garden of Eden to do what? To till it. Amen. First assignment, walk. Why? Everything you will become in life to a great extent will be determined by your labor. Not the labor of another person. That's why people who have labored and you want them to finance or release their money to your hand, don't blame them. Sometimes you are, uncle is so stingy. I requested for 20K. He just sent 1K. Why should he be using his own labor to service your life? Huh? Are we together? He's not supposed to. You to find something to do. Are we together? Right? Giving you something out of what he has labored for, of course, consider that generosity, but it's a loss. That doesn't mean you should become stingy and you live for yourself alone. I say, Pastor, I said we shouldn't give. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. Amen. For every cobble I'm expecting, I already have a plan for it. So if someone just wake up one morning, uncle, hey, can I get 50K? 50K, K. 50G in it. Do you understand? 
I mean, to take out of it will sabotage my own plan. So don't blame anybody if he's not giving you anything. You to get out and do what? Walk. What of him? If I'm not in a position to, that should be temporary. I do not should not be a lifestyle. Get something to do. Hallelujah. The first task God gave man after he created him, put him in the garden of Eden is walk. Till it. In other words, God expected Adam to walk the land. And it is out of his labor that his needs supposed to be met. Are we together? So having a vision and not ready to walk or to labor, put down labor that will make it to become a reality. Uh, don't blame God at all. Walk. Let me tell your neighbor, walk. 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 Genesis chapter 41. Very long verse. You can read it when you get home. Pharaoh had a dream in Genesis chapter 40. Nobody could help him to interpret it. Joseph was sent for. And Joseph came and he interpreted it. Made everything to be plain. And immediately, Pharaoh said, well, who else can help us to execute this initiative rather other than you. So he gave the assignment to Joseph and Joseph jumped at it and he walked. You know, without him walking, the seven years of abundance could have been wasted. He started building silos where they started storing food, buying excesses, pulling it in silo, pulling it in the silo, putting it in silo. It's work. And he did that for seven years. Then the family came. He said, well, they opened the silo and they started releasing the grain. People were buying it. Hallelujah. Right? Pharaoh had the vision or dream. Joseph interpreted the dream. But without work, famine will have wiped away the entire nation of Egypt. Work is the key thing. Are we together? And you know, it was not the interpretation that made Joseph to be great. It was the work. Greatness lie in labor. The new greatness lie in labor. People may not want to see your face. People may hate you. They don't. But look, if you are hardworking and you can solve their problem, they will swallow their pride and ego and they will still come and meet you. Are we together? At that time, nobody, nobody ever opened his mouth and said, ah, Joseph, uh, Joseph is an Hebrew. Uh, he's not an Egyptian. No. Uh, let's look for, you know, uh, uh, our kinsman or our countryman all of them will have died nobody raised issue of ethnicity or religion right it's not everybody in Egypt for instance that loved Joseph he was a very shrewd businessman are we together because when the people spend the whole of their money to buy grains and there was no more money and they went to Pharaoh Pharaoh said go and meet Joseph say ah we know this guy is very difficult to deal with. And when they came to Joseph, Joseph, we don't have money again. He said, well, you have land now. Huh? Okay. Two Congos of Gari equivalent to one plot of land. How many plots do you have? I have 20. Oh yeah, give him 20. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you know what happened? He took over the whole land of Egypt and Pharaoh became the landlord of the entire nation of Egypt. He shifted. Whoever owns the land is entitled to whatever you cultivate on it. So he made Pharaoh to become wealthy. Labor. Let someone say labor. 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 Let's look at some interesting scriptures again this morning before I round up. But don't forget, vision without labor will only lead to frustration. Vision without work will not turn into anything. 
until you are ready to walk. Forget about it. You can never become anything. A lazy man has no place anywhere. Yoruba will say, Ibi Bobo, Luba Lagbara, or Lenikan, La Yoba. If you are lazy in Nigeria and you run to US, you will still, you still not, you won't succeed. You are a lazy man in this country with all the opportunities where no computer is monitoring you. Where if you make 20 million, federal inland revenue does not even know where you exist. You don't pay tax. And if you want to pay it, it's what you declare that they get from you. You say in a year I make 20,000. Here is 1,000 naira. They will still thank you. Even though you made 20 million. And you are going to a place where they have your data. Everything. Every money that flows into you and they have. You go to UK, they see you driving a BMW. Fiam. Immediately, London Metropolitan Police take the plate number. Particularly if you are black. They write the plate number and immediately they send it to the Board of Inland Revenue. We saw someone riding a BM. What so so and so amount of money? How much is he paying? And what betides you? If they check your tax record, what they find there does not colorate with the car you are riding. You, go, you will rot in jail. I, I wish we can do that in Nigeria. Let them come out when you are doing your great grandmother's funeral the second time. Count the number of cows you slaughter and let them go and check your record. I just. <laughs> you know, people will slaughter cows again. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, at times when, the, when, when government says they are bankrupt, you know, I say, well, the politics will not allow them to do that. Get agents, recruit young folks, graduates, employ them to be moving around, particularly during the Ember month. Anywhere they are doing wedding, let them go there. How many guests? 2,000. Plate of rice, half a million. Calculate the number of cows they slaughter. Then check the record of the father and the mother of both the bridegroom and the groom. How much have they paid? 2,000 naira. Hey, arrest you immediately. You know all these excesses primitive display of wealth when, and that is what is killing us. Primitive display of wealth is one reason why the young ones don't want to walk again. They want to do Yahoo, they want to do rituals, they don't want, they want just make the money anyhow. And until we do that, we are going nowhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Check your records. Before you know what's going on, all these excesses and wastages we come to an end. We'll be putting our money more in productive activities. Not this wasteful, I want to show the whole world that I've arrived. Where? Nobody has ever arrived on planet Earth. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Amen. Some of the things you try here, go over, go over there and try it. You'll be in serious, serious trouble. That's why at times, those who are there, it's difficult for them to send money home. Some of them, you have uncles who have been there since Egbo has gone 10 years. He has not. The last time, you just sent $20 to me, me $20. Huh. If you know what the labor, sometimes some of them, they have to be working in five places at the same time just to cover up for the bill. It's below electricity. Here, at times, we put on light. If you move around now, eh, particularly maybe people put on light during the night, during the evening and night, and overnight, Nepal, what do they call them? You know, they have taken light. You know, we don't bother to switch off. So during the day, you see people's bulbs still on. You try that in UK. They say Ti waje. Or you try it in Switzerland. They say, yeah. When I went for a training program, that my room, when I open the door like this, the light will come on. As I step out, the light will just switch it. Ebora will not be see me. What is that? The moment I enter, the thing will switch on. The moment, I, the same thing with the, with, the, with the fan, right? Once you step out, 
every gadget gets switched off. Then I found out the amount they pay for kilowatt of electricity is killing. And there is no to your loan over there. If you are to pay for gas and your gas finished during winter, you and your entire family will get frozen in the house. One of my friends will say, well, during winter like this, when the cost of eating the house is very high, everybody moves into one room in the house. That room will be the sitting room for everybody, bedroom for everybody. Because they can only afford to heat just one room. And here, uh, those of us, well, we don't have public water tap flowing as it's supposed to. In those days, that used to, to, to flow. I mean, at times the water tap gets poor and people don't care. The water is just wasting. You try it. My friend told me, I said, in their house, cumulatively, they pile up the bear. When you go, when you finish, you put tissue paper on it. And you use the tall disinfectant so that the thing does not start coming up with foul odor. So every other person will use it like that for the whole day. 12 midnight, they will flush it. So they flush their toilet once in a day. I say, why? I say, ah. For every foie, pasta lilulonye. Do you know the number of times you flush toilet? What to flush? What to be pocket? Yeah! Hallelujah. That's, it's, life is not so easy for them over there as such. Some four or five places. My, one of my junior colleagues left for UK several years ago. He came back two years after. The whole of his head white. Ah, say, oh, Oluti. Otikilo Shele. And the muscles of the ah, he said, Pastor, it was hellish. Who took you to hell? Huh? He said, to survive, he must be working in five places just to pay the bills. And at times, why transiting on the train that will have time for his seminars and all those stuff? He said, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let someone say labor. Labor. Do you want to make it? It's labor. Now, if even when you pray, God will answer your prayers, but he will still expect you to do what? To labor. Prayer is no substitute or subsidy. Do you understand? For labor. It's no subsidy. That's why I believe so much in the common saying of St. Augustine. Labrare et orare. Walk and pray. You walk, you pray. You walk, you pray. You walk without prayer. Demons can deal with you. You pray without work. Nothing will come out of it. Are we together? What we call blessing is just the multiplication. Increase that comes as a result of God getting involved in what you are doing. And uh, if you are not doing anything and the blessing of God comes, zero times one million, what is it? Huh? Zero times one billion, what is it? Now, one times one million, what is it? Let's say the factor of divine blessing is one million. Do you understand? And that one million will translate into the unit of work you put down. Whoever put one unit of work down and is multiplied that by that one million, what will he get? Whoever put ten units of work down and you multiply it by that one million, what does it turn to? Eh? Aha. Whoever put down hundred units of work and is multiplied by the same one million, what does it translate to? Aha. Now, what actually is now the divining factor? Eh? It's the work. God is no respecter of person. It's the work. Hallelujah. It's the work. So, but for you not to be doing anything and you just expect wealth to be coming, no. 
That's not the way God does. God sustained them throughout their 40 years in the wilderness because they were in transit. There was no way they could plant. There was no way they could uh, get involved in any economic activity because they were moving. Do you understand? But to let you know how fear God is, he said, well, when you pass through the territories of the countries that inhabit the land, if they allow you to pass through, you pay for the water, you pay for the food. Not that you just plunder their resources. No, you must pay. Are we together? When they approach the land of Moab, and the Moab said, no, you are not passing through. I said, Moses said, we are ready to pay for everything. Say no. Are we to, to let you see the justice of God? And he sustained them. Manna was coming down. Manna was coming down. Manna was coming down until they crossed the Jordan. The moment they crossed the Jordan and the first city on the other side was Jericho, manna stopped. Manna just stopped. I'm sure some people still went out searching for it. Manna stopped. Now you are in the promised land. Start walking. That's God. Start what? Walking. Start walking. Because the full potentials that God has packaged inside each one of us, in form of gift, in form of talent, even in form of calling, it is work that will turn it into tangible things. Even in ministry, go and look at all those big men of God. You hear them. It's not by sleep. You, so the work they do, the work, they, the work of the ministry, well, I, I've been in ministry for almost 25 or more than 25 years. I know. Some of them really sleep up to four hours. They will pray, they will study the administrative business side of ministry, which is equally important. As equally important, even if not more important than the spiritual side. But if you get it right in the spiritual side, the administrative side lags it, the devil will finish your ministry. Are we together? Everything. They monitor. Work. Labor. The extent to which the blessing manifests is defined by the labor you are ready to put in. Second Kings chapter 4. Even if God promised you a miracle, in that story we have someone that died, a prophet died. One of the sons of the prophet associated in the ministry of Elijah died. And you know what? Are you left serious debt behind and the creditors came because in those days once you can't pay your debt they take your children or the assets you have left behind they liquidate it if it's, you don't have any asset they pick your kids auction them in the market to recover their money so this guy did not leave anything behind and at the end of the day well they came to pick his two sons and of course the mother after crying 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 said what will I do they rushed to the prophet Man of God, you know my husband loves God so much. That means loving God does not translate into blessing. You can love God and be poor if you don't walk. Are we together? This guy loves God. And you can be anointed as well. Fire rolling on your head and you can stay be poor if you are not ready to walk. Hallelujah. And the man of God did something. Asked the woman, what did you have at all? Say, I don't have anything except a small cruise of oil. Now, the work dimension of that miracle was now introduced by the prophet. He said, go out. Borrow as many vessels as you can. You and your son, lock up yourself in a room and start pouring. Well, the Bible didn't tell us the number of drums they borrow. But to move around and start borrowing empty vessel is work. Uh, because it's not the person you borrow. You can't come to my house and say, Daddy, if someone made such a request, I, I, if I'm general, I say, okay, make you. But for me to now carry it for you, Abba. Are you feeling here? Do you understand? Praise the Lord. Amen. So, carrying the drums on their head was work. Abi, 
no, no be work. The Bible didn't tell us how much, how many vessels, but I'm sure they will have borrowed from everybody in the neighborhood carrying the thing. Where are you carrying it to the house? What do you want to use it for? We will tell you later. And they locked the door and they started pouring. For every act of miracle, there is a dimension of work that goes with it. So those who pray for miracle and they are not ready for work, you will never, never, never see the hand of God. If you as a student pray for miracle in your academics and you are not ready to read, you are not ready to do what is expected of you as a student, the blessing of God, right, or the desire of God to see you excelling may not come into reality. In other words, after you have spent time praying or you have been ministered to under the anointing, still go ahead and do what? And read. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let someone say walk. Amen. Well, let's quickly run through the scriptures and um, we'll round up this morning. I hope you are getting something. Praise the Lord. Amen. John's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 4 here. The vision of God for the salvation of mankind was actualized through what? Through work. Jesus came and he worked for three and a half years. Without carrying out the work, humanity will still have been under the hand of the devil. Hallelujah. John's Gospel 9 for it. Jesus Christ says, I must walk the works of him that sent me. So he actually walked. He labored. So let nobody think that any idea, any dream, any vision you have, you don't have to do anything about it. No, it's not like that. The principle of God is your need would get met or be tackled through the productivity. Right? Or productive activities you are involved in putting down labor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 16. The book of Proverbs contains a lot of wisdom, a wise expression, or sayings on labor. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 16. What do we have there? Please, can you project it for us? Proverbs, can we read it together? The labor of the righteous tended to life. In other words, labor is life. Labor is living. Tends to life. Labor is what? Labor is life. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 11. Proverbs 13 11. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13 11. Can we have it? He said, Wealth gotten by vanity shall what? Shall be diminished. But it that gathered by labor shall increase. Increase come through labor. How does increase, increase come? It's by labor. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. Proverbs 14, 23. What do we have there? Can we read it together? In all labor, there is what? There is profit. But the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. In all labor. All labor, there is profit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21, verse 25. Proverbs 21, 25. Can we read it together? The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. So having a desire and being unwilling to labor will amount or translate to frustration. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 8. Ecclesiastes 1 8. All things are what? Huh? All things are what? That means there is nothing you want to get involved in or achieve in life. 
that the aspect of labor will not be there. You are a student. You want to succeed academically. Be ready to labor. Are we together? You are working somewhere. Maybe you are employed. And you want to get to the top. Be ready to do what? To labor. Do you understand? Now, let me say this. Because we have this attitude is so common that when people are employed, they don't put in their best for people that employ them. It's not the right attitude. If you are not ready to be the best for another person, you can never be the best for yourself. Please put that down. If you are not ready to be the best, do the best for another person, you can ever become the best even for yourself. Why? It's in the process of becoming the best for another person that you build the capacity to become the best. When I was in Abuja, there was one man we worked together. He was our, one of our directors. And one day we were talking. A very smart, highly intelligent. And, you know, I have great respect for him. Because first, anytime we have trouble or problem, he does not believe that there is no problem you can solve. He's not born again as such. Do you understand? Like, just church goer drinks his beer. Huh? But I admire him for that. You just say, doctor, what can we... Sometimes he will call me, oh yeah, let's solve this problem. And one day we were talking, he was talking about his career trajectory in the federal civil service. And he started. The big shock. You know, what baffled me, first of all, was he, he's someone highly connected. When you mention one of the big names in Nigeria, I say, ah, Motiba Shisheri. In fact, I was this, 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 this. In fact, if he hears that I'm here now, he will send for me. Ah. And then you mentioned this. Ah, Ati Joshi Sherry. In fact, Mokba we taught the whole world. Anytime, Toba Ati Loba, Afa Milakpani. One day I now ask him, all these people you know, how come? He said, the way to get to the top, make yourself so valuable to your boss that he cannot do without you. Period. He said, once a subordinate gets to that level, he will rise to the top. Walk in a way that your boss cannot do without you. I said, what do you mean, sir? Then he mentioned, you know, he said, one time, you know, you, he said, I said, you know, you know Gambo? I said, I know Gambo. When he was in Ministry of Agriculture, and all of us were young civil servants then, many of my colleagues were run away and so on. He said, the guy does not know what agriculture is all about, other than all this. So, he will come, invite, and we want to do this, we want to do this. Can someone just put up a concept note? Then all of them will run away. I will sit down. I will put the concept note. Take it to him. He will read it. Say, ah, thank you. Hey, but what so and so, so and so? Nowhere to be found. He said, before you know what's going anything he wanted to do, he will send for me. I became his counselor. I became his advisor. I became his assistant. I became everything. When he was shifted to Ministry of Commerce, he just informed the head of service, transfer that boy to me. That's how he started. They are now see. When I left the Copyright Commission, I left him there. He moved over to aviation. One day I was just watching the news. He was already, you know, in Ministry of Petroleum Resources. So I called him and said, Baba, Emun Konja will say, Unti Moshi Akwelu and Yellow Walk. Before you know what's going on, I said, the way you are going, sir, you become permanent. Eventually became permanent secretary. Right? And during the COVID 19 briefing, those of you who watch television, huh? Any t before the Secretary to Government of the Federation, you know COVID-19 briefing they were doing last year. Uh, all the ministers will be there. It was the MC. Uh, may we now invite the Honorable Minister for Interior to come and address us. He was there. He was already, in fact, he, he ought to have retired. But by that time, I believe he clocked 60. But they extended his day. Because he would have used that principle to a point where SGF cannot do without him. And guess what? 
just some few weeks ago, I was watching the news. They said, well, uh, Nati, you know Nati, Nigeria Extractive Industry Transparent International, uh, the chairman of so-so and so. When they mentioned the name, he was the one. I said, Do you understand? Right? Once you make yourself valuable to people, you can never go down. You always get to the top. Every human being is looking for competent hand, people that will labor. Even the devil is looking for one. But how many people are ready to put in their best for others? When I left where I did my sabbatical, they, they were almost, they said, no way, this guy can't go. I wasn't a politician. I didn't know how to lobby. The only thing I knew how to do is walk, walk, and walk hard. Quickly, the day I went to pack my load, I was entering, oh, hey, you like this, my phone rang. It was the chief of staff to the attorney general. He said, well, where are you? I said, I'm just entering. He said, Park, you created Wala. He said, what Wala? He said, well, your people just came. And they said, well, they must bring you back immediately. So the attorney general said, I should call you anything you want. You must come back. Because the man who was DJ happens to be his classmate. He didn't want him to fail. He said, well, we've heard so much about you, what you did, how you work. You must come back. We'll place you on special salary. We we'll learn you are not properly true. We'll treat you well this time around. And my mind just switch off. Then, after some time, I remember, it was God that asked me to leave. I said, well, I'm sorry, Peter. When I come to Abuja, I will explain to you. Let me tell the Attorney General. I, I, I won't be able to. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Up to today, there is nothing they are doing. I left the place 2010, but up to today, there is nothing they are doing they sent for me. The last act program they did, the adige, I was in Abuja then I went on another thing. He just called me and said, ah, uh, Prof, where are you? I said, well, where are you also? He said, I mean, why are you calling me? He said, look, there is this thing we want to do. I mean, all honesty, you are the one that can coordinate. We are having consultation with our stakeholders. I said, well, interestingly, I'm in Abuja. Ah! He said, glory to Jesus. Can you be with us tomorrow? I said, I will be with you. Hallelujah. They knew my worth. It's through work, not politics. Are we together? Labor is what you need to convert your vision into reality. Unwillingness to put down labor will frustrate God's intention to bless you in reality. Are we together? Are we together? Are we together? Are we together? Hallelujah. I'm sure some of you here will be saying, <laughs> but there is no work in Nigeria. When there is no work, where will I labor? There is work everywhere. Amen? There is work. We work here yesterday mixing concrete. It wasn't an easy work. Abi, Pastor Mayowa, was it easy? How many of you have mixed concrete before? It was work. And those guys left this place with something in their pocket. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No one can wake up without heating. But we import food in Nigeria. So there is work to be done in that area. Do you understand? Every area where there is need, the potential for labor to, 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 to get wealth is there. And if there is a country where there is plenty need, it is Nigeria. Are we together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me stop here today. Maybe next week we'll continue. Amen? But don't forget labor or work is necessary to turn vision into reality. You are a businessman, you will labor. If you know how the likes of Aliko Dangote, how they run around, you will marvel. In those days, you know, when the late Chief M. K. Abiola was appointed to a particular committee, and the late Dr. Tai Sholari had to work with him. He said, for the first time, you know, that formerly he had the impression that MKO was one of these people that just use the connection, make money, lazy, carry women around. He said, well, the few days he spent with this man, ha, he said, he worked so hard that he barely slept up to four hours. Walking. Monitoring this, pursuing this. Uh, let's do it this way and other things like that. So his impression about him changed 
totally. It's work. Are we together? It is work. Let's rise up on our feet. Glory to Jesus. 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 You know one thing, the anointing can help you to find work. But you must be ready to put down labor. To places where their labor will be profitably engaged. In the name of our Lord Jesus. On the platform of your mercy, visit every soul that is here this morning. Kemo Sahala Kashita Sandaya. Those of profitable labor engagement that has not opened. Let it begin to open for them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. The channels for profitable engagement of their labor that has been blocked. Let it open this morning. In the name of Jesus. Every necessary help needed. Because no man can be bigger than the help that is made available unto him. Lord, I pray, let it be released into their lives this morning. In the name of Jesus. Every favor that will make this to become a reality. Let it come upon their lives this morning. In the name of Jesus. We we'll thank you. And we give you praise. Prosper the work of their hands. Enlarge their coast. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. We will have the war feast now. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you are glad to be in church this morning, praise the Lord. If you are happy to be in church this morning, to be in the presence of God, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to welcome every one of us to church once again. And I want to welcome us to World Feast. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We announced last week that we'll be taking assessment today. Hallelujah. I'm not seeing smile on our faces. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We've taken revision for three weeks and we announced that today is going to be assessment of all that we have, you know, thoughts for 40 weeks. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, don't gist with your friend. This is not the time to gist. This is not the time to, you know, exchange um, words or pass paper to yourselves. This is also not the time to open your Bible. Praise the Lord. So your time 